Okay, you're a Hare Krishna? Yes. Are you a guru? No. Are you a teacher? Yeah. Okay. Can I have permission to interview you for YouTube and all media purposes? Yeah, of course. What's your Hare Krishna name? Rigu Pati Das. And what does that mean? Servant of Krishna or servant of God. Servant of God? Okay. Yes. So what happens after someone dies? Where do they go? Well, it depends what they did while they were alive. But they will go someplace. I'll show you a picture here. Okay. This is showing how as we... Let's look at the cover. Okay, cover. Bhagavad Gita. Well, that's the, bug of, that's the Bible of the Hare Krishnas. Correct. Okay. Absolutely correct. And it has pictures? Yeah, some pictures. This is showing how as we get older our body changes. Yeah, but I how can we... testify to that. <laughs> right, me too. Um, but the soul or the consciousness remains the same and it's, ir it's irreducible. Consciousness continues after the body's finished and it exists before the body began. So the quality of our activities during this lifetime will determine what body we find ourselves in next. Is there a kind of a hell? Yeah, there's heaven, there's hell, but they're not, both of those are not permanent. We don't believe in eternal damnation. There's no concept of eternal damnation. In but Christian there is punishment in a place called hell. Oh, yeah. So where are you going? Well, I hope I'm going to at least come back as a human being and be able to continue with my attempt to become a, a pure devotee and go back to the spiritual world. So there's the crux of the matter. Hare Krishnaism is just like all the other isms. It's a works righteousness religion. It provides no hope of salvation. And it's all to do with what you do to try and earn everlasting life. So this man needs the law to bring the knowledge of sin and destroy his false hope of being able to obtain his own salvation. That is not true. Krishna consciousness is not a work righteous ism. Krishna recommends bhakti. He says, only by bhakti can I be known. Bhakti means love or devotion. And he suggests that it's not just lip service, I love you, God, I love you, but you have to act in such a way that demonstrates your love. What is that? You follow his guidelines. You follow the regulative principles. You meditate on the word. You meditate on his activities, on his form. So the devotee is demonstrating his humility that he will make an attempt to become pure, that is, to live according to the pure standards recommended by Krishna. Ultimately, it is Krishna who is giving us salvation because he is known as Mukunda, the giver of salvation or liberation. It is a two-way street. It is not dependent only on one's work. So that is a false evaluation. What's the worst thing to come back as, as a cockroach? Worst thing to come back as? Uh, Politician? <laughs> yeah, some lower species of life. I mean, you know, anything lower than a human being is kind of pretty, a lot of suffering because you don't have any opportunity to, uh, how would you say it, uh, improve yourself spiritually and you're just kind of like stuck in a body which is, you know, miserable and... Well, you lack understanding if you're an animal. You lack understanding, right, exactly. Yeah. And animals are generally suffering in different ways. Well, my dog's not. He looks pretty happy. Your dog looks like he's... <laughs> he's a sheep. To the role of sheep. Okay. Um, what do you think of Jesus? Well, we believe Jesus Christ was the Son of God, but not God. We believe that Jesus was here on earth executing a mission um, on behalf... Actually, let me read you something right from the Bhagavad Gita. Since you're asking that question, I'll just read you right out of the book. And that's probably the most accurate thing I could... Possibly. It's about Jesus. Oh yeah, it's about Jesus. Not a lot, but there is a... Couple. Is it based on what the scriptures say of him? Um, what the Bible says? It, it's, it's consistent, I believe, with that, uh, although it's coming from our tradition. Okay, so here, it says here, uh, There are many examples in history of devotees of the Lord who risked their lives for the spreading of God consciousness. This is how we understand Jesus Christ. We, when I say we, I mean the Vaishnav tradition. Vaishnav means followers of the teachings of Vishnu or Krishna. And that's so now you're a committed Hare Krishna? Yeah, yeah, 50 years. 50 years? Yeah, yeah. yeah I got, well, 50 years and four months from now. I got initiated. I joined middle of April 1973, so I got four months left, and then I hit my 50. I became a Christian in 1972. Okay, yeah. similar. So it goes on to say that... Um, Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Oh, yeah. There are many examples in history of devotees of the Lord who risked their lives for the spreading of God consciousness. The favorite example is Lord Jesus Christ. He was crucified by the non-devotees 
but he sacrificed his life for the spreading of God consciousness, of course it would be superficial to understand that he was killed. Referring to the idea that, um, you know, he's a pure devotee, he's here on a mission from God. You mean he had no sin? He had no sin, right. They, they, they couldn't really punish him. So what do you think of his words, no man takes my life from me, I have power to lay it down, I have power to raise it up. What did he mean by that? Mm. Um, he's protected by God. You know, the, the, the people can't overrule the will of God. He was here executing a mission on behalf of God, and uh, obviously his relationship was such that if... Uh, what was that mission? Deliver God consciousness. If, if people were to follow, we believe that, you know, we're actually, we consider ourselves Christians. But Hare Krishnas? Yeah, we consider ourselves Christians, and in and, and, and this sense, that we believe that we are following uh, what Jesus Christ taught. You know, we believe if Jesus Christ were to come back today, here on earth, right now, he would approve of us. He would approve of Hare Krishnas. Here's an unusual question. What's the little tail at the back, on the back of the head? What's oh, it for? It's, 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 uh, there's different types of... Um, Monks in India, um, we are Vaishnavs, as I mentioned previously. So this is what distinguishes us from other monks who shave their head completely, or maybe have a you know some monks have a different well when we I don't wear it out here, but we have marks on the forehead, and uh, so we have a particular mark. Other other uh, schools of philosophy have different marks. They have lines going this way. Um, I have lines going that way. You have lines going that way, right? Hey, uh, is, it, is it a myth that the, uh, that the tail is for Krishna to pull you up to heaven? Is that ridiculous? Or I've um, heard I that. I think that's meant to be taken literally. But uh, it is something. I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I remember hearing that, especially when I first joined, devotees would tell me that. But I never heard our teachers say that. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. If, so I don't consider some, something. Something's a bit wrong. Um, folklore. It's kind of Hare Krishna folklore. Now, I've forgotten your Hare Krishna name. What's we, your... Rigu Pati Das. What's your real name? Jeffrey Solomon. Can I call you Jeff? Yeah, sure. Okay. Jeff, do you think you're a good person? I'm trying to be. Are you basically morally a good person? Well, um, I'm striving to be. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm familiar with the Ten Commandments being from a Jewish background. and I'm. So um, how many have you broken? Uh, recently, none. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> throughout my life, uh, before I became a high Christian, I was breaking a lot more than that. You mean you lied and stolen? Oh, I lied. I, yeah, I, mean, I stole a couple times. I remember okay, that's, I that's theft. when I was five years old. And Have you ever used God's name in vain? Um, you know, if I did, it wasn't really, really, really consciously. Yeah, well, that's blasphemy. It's very serious. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus said, whoever looks upon a woman to lust for her mm -hmm. has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Oh, yeah. We can't help it, can we? It's in our nature. Pretty much, yeah. Have you ever hated someone? Um, temporarily, yeah. Mm. I mean, I usually bounce well, back from that. But anyway, yeah, at, at some point in time, probably. Yeah, the Bible says he who hates his brother is a murderer. Mm -hmm. So, Jeff, here's a summation. This is for you to judge yourself. Okay. You've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart who's a murderer at heart. So if God judges you by those Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, and by the way, I'm Jewish too. Okay. If God judges you by those Ten Commandments... You're going to be innocent or guilty? Well, at this point, I'd be innocent. Why innocent? I'll tell you why. One understanding that we have for your benefit. Can you just tell me? Sure, yeah. That God is capable of forgiving. And I'm engaged in, I've dedicated my life to serving Krishna, you know, through this, the, the teachings of this tradition. And Krishna guarantees, right at the end of his Bhagavad Gita here, he says, Abandon all varieties of religion and surrender unto me, which is what I've done, and I will protect you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So let me, t let me tell you Krishna what... Krishna is going to protect me from all sinful reactions, and I don't have any fear of that. Okay. This is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. So if you repent and trust in Jesus, not your goodness or your religious works, but solely in Jesus as your Savior... God will remit your sins. You've got his promise. He'll grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Those who think they have to do something are like a man who's going to jump out of a plane 10,000 feet. He hasn't got a parachute on, but this is his plan. He's going to flap his arms and try and save himself. Mm -hmm. We'd say, don't do that. Just trust the parachute. So, Jeff, don't try and save yourself on Judgment Day. Don't look to your religious works or your good works. Just simply transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. And the minute you do that, you've got the promise from God that cannot lie, he'll remit your sins in a second. Is this making sense? 
Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I feel like I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I've got to admit, that was a curveball. I was not expecting him to say that. I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I was hoping he'd say, wow, that's such good news. Eternal life is a free gift. I don't have to earn it with my religious works. It comes by the mercy of God, but he didn't. And listen to what he continued to say. If you had, you'd be, you'd be holding on to the scriptures, not the Bhagavad Gita. No, no. See, because I feel Jesus Christ is being misrepresented by his own tradition. If Jesus Christ were to come here right now, let's say, imagine just from a hypothetical situation, Jesus Christ comes onto the campus and he's walking down here, and we, you know, what would you do? First, just out of curiosity, what would you do if Jesus Christ came here right now? Well, let me just tell you what I would do. I'd fall on my face because the Bible says no man has seen him. Right. I, he's, I coming, he's coming in flaming fire. I'd, I'd lie down fall yeah. on my face too, right? He's coming and in flaming fire. What would you say? Say, Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. Yeah, and what else? I'd say that. That's good. That's good for so What else would you say? I, t I could tell you what I would say. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll fin let me finish it off. Okay, go ahead. Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by you. Uh -huh. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Only through Jesus, the Jesus revealed in Scripture. So, Jeff, he's the one you must trust in, not one right. revealed exactly. in other writings. What I would say, all right, I'd say, I'd, I'd say that was fine what you said, okay? And I'd say after I got up from falling flat on my face, so to speak, I'd say, Lord, how can I serve you? Because that's, that's our position. We're meant to be serving God. So I'd immediately want to know, how can I serve you? How can I please you? What can I do to execute your will? You see? And I pray to Jesus Christ every day, and I have been, you know, consistently. Well, not consistently, but I mean, I don't, because it's not like a regulative principle. Do you ever read the Bible? I do read the Bible. I do read the Bible. Do you know what it says? This is what it says. And this isn't meant to offend you, but the scriptures say, the things the demon, sorry, the things the Gentiles sacrifice to, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And so make sure your faith is in Jesus, because the devil is well, real, yeah, and I he'll deceive you and blind you to the gospel. I, 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 as I said, I accept Jesus my Savior as I understand them through this tradition. But Here's where I think I messed up. He was Jewish. I should have gone straight to the first of the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Krishna is a false god. It's another god before the god that revealed himself to Moses and gave his law. So that's another gross misunderstanding. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. He is the source of all matter and spirit. There is no truth superior to him. Everything rests upon him like pearls strung on a thread. So God, Krishna, he himself says that I come millennium after millennium, to do what? To reestablish the principles of religion. I come to annihilate the demoniac and to please the righteous. So the understanding of Jehovah and Krishna being separate is highly misinformed. Not knowing that the Lord is always on a mission to reclaim the fallen conditioned souls. So Krishna appeared before Moses to give him the commandments so that he could assist his children out of the entanglement of material existence. Thinking that Krishna is a false god is revelatory of false understanding, misunderstanding, a poor fund of complete knowledge. But following on that, that, that hypothetical situation I started off with, if Jesus Christ were to come here today, and after we finished paying our obeisances that we've referred to it, and I got up and asked him, how can I serve you? And, you know, and he said, well, take me, take, let's, let's go for a little drive. Let's go to some slaughterhouses, okay? And we took him for a drive to a slaughterhouse, and we showed him what was going on in there. And do you think he would approve of that? Do you think he would say, yeah, this is okay. Is not, what's the problem? Well, let me answer that. What do you think about abortion? Uh, I think it's a sinful activity. Sinful? Yeah. I it's wrong to murder your children? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what do you think of the sacrifices of Solomon in the Old Testament when they slaughtered animal after animal after animal and sacrificed to God, which is a type of Christ being sacrificed on the cross? The so, preacher goes on not to really answer the question if Jesus would approve of all this animal slaughter. But he tries to introduce a different topic 
abortion, hoping that the devotee may be agreeable to abortion, which he is not. Well, he's hinting that human killing is more important to avoid than animal killing. And then he compares the killing of the animals in the Old Testament as sacrifice as the same as killing of Christ on the cross. Well, if that's the same, then where is the sacrifice today with all the restaurants and hotels and casinos and takeaways that do not sacrifice those animals to God? I just slaughtering them for the sake of selling and for the consumption of those who eat flesh and blood. So we can tend to think we know God's will, but open the scriptures and read God's will. God's will is to believe or trust in Jesus for your salvation and not your yes, own yes, religious right, works. So we, uh, we feel that Jesus Christ, unfortunately, is being misrepresented by his own tradition. The Bible, what does that mean? Me, it means specifically that for me the Bible is not the absolute word of God. This is my word of God, the Bhagavad Gita and the Vedic scriptures, and I don't accept what's stated in the Bible. I do read the Bible, but I don't accept uh, what's written in the Bible as, you know, the absolute truth. Well, let me share something with you. Jesus said, your word is truth. The scriptures say, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that you might be fully furnished by God. So. That Bible is God's Word. It's axiomatic, the, the prophecies that's in the Bible. That's your belief. Well, can I give you a book that I've written? Yeah, sure. Okay, let me get it for you. Okay. Jeff, this is called Scientific Facts in the Bible, and it'll show you the Bible is no ordinary book. All scriptures, God breathed, and you can trust it. So please rethink your attitude towards the scriptures. When you read the Bible, when you read the Gospels, believe it because God wouldn't leave us without okay. without witness the Bible says your word is a light to my feet or a lamp to my feet and a light to my path you've been very gracious to listen to me I really appreciate it's it it's been a pleasure talking to you but there's no way you're going to get me to believe that Jesus Christ would approve of what's going on in slaughterhouses all over the world and you know so therefore why are Christians doing that if, if, if it's something that Jesus Christ wouldn't approve of why are the Christians as a community at large why are they why are they eating you know going along with that of you know that it's okay well, we're not going along with it we're not going along with it we're just saying what jesus said you strain at the gnat and you swallow a camel there's more important things in life than animals being slaughtered and that is human beings being slaughtered we're seeing that happen right throughout the world yeah, it's not like you can't do both it's not that difficult yeah, we'll do both we'll do both i think you need to show compassion to human beings and you need to show compassion to animals it was, i love my animal i love my dog and i make sure he gets fed good cow, food. too you love I your love cow. my cow love i sheep. absolutely love my cow love and i love pig. my sheep i love my pig you know, and cow and sheep all you have to do if you, if you go on youtube you can watch videos of what goes on in those slaughterhouses they're, they're terrible yes. and when, when you actually see it when you know because most people don't think about what's going on they just go to the supermarket and they pick their meat off the shelf there but if you actually see what's going on how those animals are treated and and how they're suffering and everything anybody who watches one of that should should if they're still human they should think twice about what they're doing i i i, I, I agree with you absolutely if you give me a book i'd like to give you a book hang on okay. don't need to run i'll walk over with you okay. this is, uh, how you doing I'm well, how are you? Had a great talk with your friend there. Thank you for introducing me. What you got here? Some of your it's books. A, it's a book called Higher Taste. It's an introduction to a plant-based diet. Okay. And it, ex it has recipes in it, but it also, the first few chapters explain the reasons why people should follow this type of diet. Okay. Health, well, thank economic, you very much. moral, and ethical, philosophical. And you you took things. my book, I'll take yours. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> great to talk to you, Jeff. Thank you, Ray. Nice to nice meet, to you. meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.